Are you ready to unlock the key to a life of true abundance and fulfillment? In this video, we're diving into the profound teachings of Buddhism to uncover the one belief that may be hindering your path to happiness and success. Lesson 1. Identify the limiting belief. Finding the idea that is holding you back is the first thing you need to do to break free from it. It might sound easy, but this is often the hardest part of the process. It's so hard for people to see how their views affect their daily lives because they are so ingrained in their minds. Their effects on our thoughts, feelings, and actions happen automatically, and we are not even aware of it. Thus, if you want to change your life, you must first become aware of these limiting ideas. A limiting thought may also be the cause of your habit of putting things off all the time. Most of the time, putting things off is a way to protect ourselves from facing our fears. When we don't think we can or should succeed, we put things off to escape the pain of failing or being rejected. If you feel like you can't move forward with your goals or dreams because you feel like you're stuck, it could be because of a limiting attitude. It can be very frustrating to feel stuck, especially when you don't know why you're not going forward. The main reason for this is usually a belief that is stopping you from making the changes you need to make. The first and most important thing you need to do to break free from your limiting thought is to recognize it. After you become aware of this idea, it doesn't have as much power over you. Remember that the idea has been working behind the scenes, affecting you without you being aware of it. Your thoughts and behaviors start to change when you shine a light on it. Buddhist lessons tell us that becoming more aware is the key to change. We are stuck in a loop of unconscious habits and patterns if we are not aware of it. But if we are aware, we can start to make choices on purpose that will free us and make us happy. Being self-aware and kind to yourself means recognizing your limiting belief. You can now start the trip to freedom from the mental chains that have been holding you back. Lesson 2. Recognize its origins. Once you know what limiting thought is holding you back, the next important step is to figure out where it came from. A lot of the ideas that affect our lives, especially the ones that hold us back, aren't things we choose. Instead, they come from things we've done in the past, people we've been around, and the places we grew up. To get rid of these ideas, you need to know where they came from. Beliefs that hold us back don't just come from close friends and family. They also come from society and culture as a whole. There are many unspoken rules and expectations in society about what we should do, how we should look, and who we should be in order to be seen as worthy or successful. These expectations aren't always reasonable, and if we feel like we don't meet them, they can make us feel bad about ourselves. Many people think that success is limited to a small group of people or that happiness can only be found after reaching certain goals, such as having a well-paying job, a great relationship, or a certain body type. When society puts these kinds of pressures on us, we might feel like we're not good enough the way we are, or that we need to fit a certain wood of success in order to be worthy. There is a teaching in Buddhism called Dependent Origination that says everything we experience comes from a mix of conditions and reasons. We believe the same things. These things happen because of how we were raised, the society we live in, the media we watch, and the people we've been in relationships with. This helps us understand that our views are not absolute truths. They are shaped by our experiences and can be changed as a result. Beliefs that hold you back can also come from past traumas or mistakes. When we go through hard times, like failing at something, being rejected, or even just feeling a lot of mental pain, we often make assumptions about ourselves based on those experiences. For example, if you had a big loss early in life, you might have started to think that you are a failure and can't be successful. You should know that these views are not your fault. They come naturally after going through hard things. They were made during painful times, but that doesn't mean they have to define you for the rest of your life. Realizing that these beliefs come from past events helps you put some space between yourself and the belief. You may begin to see the idea as a response to a certain event rather than as a true part of who you are. 
Also, it's important to remember that some of our limiting ideas may come from our family or even our ancestors. Many families believe things that have been passed down from generation to generation without anyone ever questioning them. These ideas could be about money, success, relationships, or your own worth. If you grew up in a family that had money problems, for example, you may have learned that money is hard to come by, or that other people are more likely to be financially successful than you. Or maybe your family taught you that it's not safe to trust other people, which has made it hard for you to make close relationships. We often don't even realize we've taken on these views that we got from our parents. It's more like the way things are to them than views that can be changed. But the truth is that you don't have to believe something just because it was passed down to you. You can break the cycle and make new ideas that help you and make you feel better. Buddhism is based on the idea of impermanence, which means that everything in life, including our views, is always changing. It's a good idea to remember that just because we've believed something for a long time, we don't have to keep believing it forever. The ideas we hold are not set in stone. They are fluid and can change. Your limiting belief is only temporary because it was formed in reaction to certain circumstances. Realizing this helps you see it for what it is. The theory. Your opinion can change over time, just like those things have. Because you know that your opinion will change, it starts to lose its power over you. Today you understand that this idea does not define you and that you have the power to change it. It's important to know where your opinion came from, whether it was your family, your childhood, society, or a traumatic event in the past. But it's also important to own it now. You don't have to blame yourself for having the idea. You just have to realize that it's your job to change it. You have the power to act when you take ownership for what you believe. You stop waiting for things to change outside of yourself in order to feel different about yourself. Instead, you know that you have the power to change what you believe. This is a freeing thought because it means you are no longer controlled by your past or your surroundings. You can change your views so that they fit with the life you want to live. Knowing where your limiting thought came from is a very important step in the process of changing. It helps you see the idea for what it is, something from your past that isn't really a reflection of your potential. You can put more distance between yourself and the idea once you know where it came from. You understand that it doesn't need to define you or your future. Lesson 3. Question what you believe. Once you know what the idea is and where it comes from, it's time to question it. This is a very important step because the idea will keep controlling you until you question it. What you believe that stops you from reaching your goals is like a wall. To get past that wall, you have to question how it's built. Buddhism tells us to question everything, even what we think and believe. Thoughts don't have to be true just because they come to you. A lot of the time, our thoughts are just noise that keeps us from seeing the real us. You can see things as they really are instead of how your mind has been telling you they are when you start to question your limited belief. One way to question what you believe is to look for proof that it is not true. If you don't think you can be great, look back at your life and find times when you did well, no matter how small. These events show that what you believe is not entirely true. When you think about these wins, you start to weaken the belief that is holding you back. Lesson 4. Change it to beliefs that make you stronger. Once the limiting belief has been successfully tested, the next step is to replace it with a belief that helps you. You need to plant new beliefs that will grow into beliefs that help you, not just beliefs that you destroy. Saying the words isn't enough to change your old mindset into a new, empowering one. You need to live it and feel it. Buddhism says that our deeds and thoughts are deeply linked. It's not enough to think positive thoughts. You also need to do things that support them. This means getting out of your comfort zone, taking chances, and doing things you used to think were difficult. Start out small. Start by doing things that are in line with what you now believe. If you've changed your mind from, I'm not good enough to, I am capable, then show yourself that you are capable. Try something new, learn something new, or push yourself to do something that scares you. Every time you win, the new belief gets stronger. 
These new ideas will become the way you see yourself most of the time. Mindfulness, or being aware of your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors in the present moment, is a big deal in Buddhism. Mindfulness can help you as you work to change your limiting ideas. When your old belief tries to creep back in, pay attention and gently remind yourself of your new belief. Lesson 5. Keep track of your progress. Change doesn't take place quickly. Because it takes time, it's important to keep track of your work. By keeping track of your progress, you can see how far you've come and stay driven to keep going. Written down your work is one way to keep track of it. Keep a daily journal of your ideas and feelings and pay close attention to any changes in what you believe and how you act. As you write in your journal, think about the times when you lived in line with your new, empowering ideas. No matter how small these things may seem, enjoy them. Every step forward is a win. Buddhism stresses how important it is to know yourself and think about things. You become more aware of the changes happening inside you when you take the time to think about your growth. You start to see trends in when the old belief comes back and when you can hold on to your new belief. It helps you stay responsible to keep track of your progress. When you see how much better you're writing, it's tougher to say you haven't changed. You can see how much you've grown when you look back. This is very important, especially on days when you feel down or don't believe you can change. Setting small goals that you can reach is another way to keep track of your progress. These goals should fit with what you've learned. If your new belief is, I deserve success, for example, set a goal that will help you achieve success in some way, like finishing a hard job at work or learning a new skill. As you reach these goals, your new belief will grow stronger. Lesson 6. Make a promise to keep growing. As soon as you start to change your views, you should make a promise to keep growing. It takes a lifetime to grow as a person, and Buddhism teaches that we are always growing and changing. You haven't finished the work just because you've changed one limiting thought. There will always be new problems to solve, new chances to grow, and new ideas to get rid of. For change to continue, you need to be open and curious. Be ready to often question what you believe and what you think you know. Don't get too used to where you are, because that can make you stay the same. Instead, welcome the pain that comes with growing. Remember that every time you leave your comfort zone, you find new ways to do things. Buddhism says that life is a circle of being born, growing, dying, and being born again. Not only does this cycle affect our bodies, but it also affects our minds and feelings. From time to time, you'll feel like you've made a lot of progress in times when you think you've gone backwards. All of this is part of the process. The important thing is to keep going with the trip. Don't give up when things go wrong. Instead, look at them as chances to learn and get better. You have the chance to strengthen your new beliefs and learn more about yourself every time you face a struggle. Spend time with people who will help you grow. Having a support system is important, whether it's a group of people with similar interests, a guide, or a close friend. These people can help you grow by giving you support, advice, and holding you accountable. Lesson 7. Give yourself time. Being kind to yourself is one of the most important things you can learn on this path. It takes time to change deeply held views. It makes sense that it will take some time to fully let go of your limiting thoughts since you've probably held on to it for a long time. Buddhism shows us how important it is to be kind to ourselves as well as to others. Self-compassion will help you change your views and grow as you go. When you're having a hard time or when an old idea comes back, be kind to yourself. Know this is a normal part of the process and doesn't mean you failed. Don't forget that change doesn't happen in a straight line. There will be bright and cloudy times, as well as times when things make sense. It's important to stay committed to the process, even when it gets hard. Have faith that the changes you want will happen with time, work, and patience. You can break free from the limits of your mind and live the life you deserve by recognizing the belief, questioning it, changing it with a belief that helps you, keeping track of your progress, committing to ongoing growth, and being kind to yourself. Buddhism tells us that our past, 
our thoughts, and our fears do not have to hold us back. You and I can make the life we want, and the first step is to change the things we believe.